with our esteemed viewers. Now, you have an opportunity to watch Super Screen, not just the You for the Five Money show, on several platforms. The first is the fact that you can go to your Google Play Store, uh, just type in the keyword there, Super Screen TV NG, and our app is going to pop up. Click, and it's about um, three minutes away, and you have Super Screen on your mobile device. However, you can watch on several other platforms. If you're using a smart TV, Hisense, uh, Sony, you have an opportunity to actually watch us live. We're on the free-to-air platform as well. Plus, we are on People TV. You see that scroll in the moment. And of course, pick anyone that uh, is with ease for you and watch just in case you have to leave home. But importantly, we're actually at a segment where we get to see what the papers are saying now. Uh, let's bring them up screen in no particular order. We're taking a couple of papers this morning. Uh, it's not too sunny in Lagos. Uh, it seems cloudy. But let's start with the daily sun. Nimeth is saying it's going to be cloudy for the remaining three days, hmm. cloudy with the light thunders. Okay. All right, on the daily sun this morning, we have uh, just by the name template, Mieti Allah lobbies Southeast governments to governors to stop anti open grazing laws. And the major front burner on the daily sun, 2023 presidency, Northern Elders draw battle lines. It has two riders. Reject power shift to south. Afeni Fere Ohaneze, MBF kick. Below the front burner, we have FG insincere with fight against insecurity. And this is coming from the Lagos Archbishop. You find that on the page 26 of the Daily Sun newspaper. Secession, not solution to Nigeria's problem. Bajamia and Mila, Opo, Obi, Ribadu, and others. Kogi, 11 bandits killed. Others arrested as security closes in on Kaba kidnap suspects. Unilag, Unilag crisis. Visitation panel reports indicted Babalaki, and this is coming from FG. You find out on page 26 of the Daily Sun. We also have NASS plots against FG's fresh loans. It has two writers to it. Lawan. Bajabi Amila under pressure to halt process. Lawmakers bemoan poor oversight and lack of transparency. You find that on page 27 of the Daily, so just get a copy of that. Fantastic stories there. Let's see if we bring up IODG quickly into the matter. Uh, we know we have a long ride today, but while uh, we're looking forward to his presence on the show, we'll go over to the next paper and see what we have. If we can have IODG, that will be fine. Uh, establishing a couple of stories there. The idea of the fresh loan and Bajabi Amila and Lawan under pressure. Uh, are we going to say uh, there might be a slowdown on that particular one? Because uh, the speed, uh, the, the corporate world is actually surprised at, we, at the, the, the speed at which the approvals were coming. IODG, good morning and welcome to you for the Vibe Morning Show. Uh, we know. Uh, here in Lagos, it's looking cloudy. We don't know what Ogun State looks like. You share with us. Good morning, Chris and Raymond. Good morning, Ayo. Um, the weather is... The, the weather is... It's, fair. it's looking like it's going to rain, actually. Okay, great. Okay, we just established a couple of stories. Now, let's talk about the fact first uh, that you have uh, gunmen go into a church, why service is on, Kidnap and ex provost the pastor and worshiper. Sometimes, um, uh, you know, just just quick one. I'm just trying to establish the the, the situation now uh, is getting worrisome by the day. What's your evaluation following stories on insecurity over the weekend? Chris, uh, the, it's, it's quite unfortunate that um, we have spate of killings, uh, spate of kidnappings, and they are being perpetrated by unknown gunmen. Who are the unknown gunmen? What do they want? What is their interest? What is it? Is it political? We should be asking salient questions. Um, it's 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 one of the most dastardly acts to go into a church during service to kidnap people. In the past, we've had uh, such experience. Even under the uh, Good Luck Administration, we had cases of um, 
they were not stabbed on own government. We have uh, cases of Boko Haram going to church during service to kill people. And at a point, we won't have, we saw pictures of Reverend Fathers and everything carrying AK-47. Churches have to, especially churches in the north, they had to uh, make provision for extra security uh, structure, so, so as to uh, secure their members. But the sad thing is, we are dealing with an enemy that is unknown, and that is scary. Um, hmm. All we hear is unknown government. Who are they? What is their interest? If we do not know, then how would you fight an enemy you don't know? Interesting fact. So how do we justify the fact that uh, uh, just a couple of days ago, we had uh, the UAE publish names of six Nigerians and uh, uh, they allegedly involved in financing terrorism. And up to now, there were nothing said from the federal government and the story tends to be uh, dying by the day. Uh, like I said, uh, we did a review when the news broke. Um, I was I was very particular about the body language of the president of the presidency because we actually have the president and the presidency. Um, we we do not in in an ideal situation we do not for a foreign country a foreign body to give us a list of sponsors. We've always known the Boko Haram fight is more political. Um, and they are sponsors, actually, because in every war situation, there are beneficiaries. Um, look at the Iran, Pakistan. Look at the wars around the world. There's an interest, which basically there's a power play also. There's a part also. It's either the interest in their oil, as in the case of Iran, hmm. Iraq, and the rest. So um, when, when the uh, Boko Haram thing was building up, there was something behind it. There was an agitation behind it. Unfortunately, it was not addressed early. Then he metamorphosed into what we now have as a full-blown terrorist organization. Okay. And around the world, terrorism is not just a Nigerian thing. Hmm. We, we know how these guys operate. But the sad thing is, we have a government that is not sincere. We have a government that is not focused on the duty um, I, 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 okay. I think we, we just have to, we just have to wake up and focus on 2023 because we are stuck with, um, the Buhari Oshimba. We're, we're going to, we're going to get to that. Hiya, we're going to get to 2023. It's one of the things that, uh, has been making the news, but let's quickly go to, uh, the Punch newspaper this morning and see how punchy the stories are so we can bring you back, uh, to the platform to have comments. Quick one now, uh, the first story above the nameplate there says, uh, Nigerians monthly trade in Bitcoin rises to 44 million US dollars. That's been captured on page, uh, 56. Okay. We'll go over now to customer scam banks with fake visas tickets for forex page 27 get that story uh, not has the votes not has the votes uh, won't accept second position in 2023 nef uh, not another for making that statement there let's come down now the big story vat by state a joke comment masari on the fire akiri dolu says FIRS planned amendment dead on arrival uh, with several writers there. VAT collection battle test for Nigeria's democracy. Lagos tells Casino governor. And free money has made states lazy. Pandev replies Masari on comment. More states will support us to kill FIRS planned amendment. Kiri uh, Dolu. And you have photos there showing some uh, activities going on. You might want to find out what it's all about. Two stories to go from the Punch newspaper. FG may bar unvaccinated Nigerians from government facilities. And NDLEA arrests pregnant woman, fake soldier, stops Canada Australia bound drugs. That's the last we're taking. You can read up all those stories from. Uh, the punch this morning. Let's go to the next one, a quick one. Let's go to the next paper this morning and see uh, what the stories are for want of time. The Guardian newspaper is up next. 
On the Guardian this morning, manufacturers demand for Forex nears $2 billion amid scarcity and weak Naira. It has two riders to it. Middle class Nigerians shop for stable dollar as FX crisis continues. Naira in moment of decision trades at 570 Naira per dollar. Just next to it, we have 11 bandits killed, three victims rescued in Kogi State. Resident doctors continue strike. Appeal against court ruling. Don't rubbish yourself in 2023. PGF DG advises Jonathan. 2023, Tinubu is our Sultan Capone in APC, says Akere Dolu. And another major front burner says uh, gunmen on the rampage in Southeast kill three policemen, torch INEC office, disperse political meeting. It has several riders to it. Police intensify efforts to arrest suspected killers of policemen in Onisha. Courts shut down in Imo as lawyers protest killing of spokesmen. 26 security officials. 11 others killed by non-state actors in two weeks. That's the much we can take on The Guardian. Hmm. Go get a copy. 26 security officials, 11 others killed by non-state actors in two weeks. Now, this is really the morning. This is a scary part of it. But let's just quickly see. Don't rubbish yourself. In 2023, uh, some stakeholders are telling Jonathan. I did you. Let's come into this matter now. Quick one there. Uh, you have the story, PGFDG advises Jonathan not to rubbish himself. There have been some uh, stories online uh, saying Jonathan has moved to the All Progressives Congress, but we've not had an official statement for that. You know, it all starts with what looks like a rumor in Vala. You see the official at the end of the day. Uh, Ayo, what do, you make of, uh, what do you make of it? Last week, we established FFK's movement, and... Um, Stories around getting a ministerial appointment, we've not seen the clear picture to that, but uh, what's your take? Do you see a good luck Jonathan in the All Progressives Congress, understanding that he has visited Mr. President uh, not in less than seven times uh, since he left office? Chris, um, we're in Nigeria. Let's not, let's not let's forget that. Um, as regards uh, former President Jonathan, there is nothing that is impossible. And that is the truth. Politics in Nigeria is about interest, it's about what you can get, it's about aligning with the ruling party, which was what we saw during um, the PDP reign. We had mass exodus of politicians move into the PDP. And since the APC came into power in 2015, we've also had series of um, I wish you can go through the list. We have a series of every political everywhere move into the APC, including the former governor of Ogo State, Benga Daniel, who was the campaign director for Atiku. So um, we have the uh, Shayo Ogule, who was a former minister under Good Luck. So as regards to uh, Good Luck Ebele, Jonathan, there's nothing that is impossible. It's all about interest. But the significance of his move to the APC, his move is going to be, is going to be like some sort of paradigm shift because the good good will, uh, good luck Jonathan enjoys till now, is going to trade in the mud because a lot of people see him as oh, you know, the people they could look up to because of the way he handled the the election by handing over to Buhari. A lot of people said he would have sabotaged the election. But if he moves to the APC, like it was in the front end of today's park, everyone will not fall. We're going to move on. We're going to shout, everyone will not fall. But the question is, will he get the tickets? Hmm. I doubt it. OK. Good one. Uh, that, that's exactly where I was driving to. Exactly what would he want from this government again, having had series of opportunity from being a governor, a deputy governor, to governor, uh, vice president to president XYZ. Okay, and currently playing a very good role with United Nations, uh, sorry, the African Union. Let's leave that. Let's go forward now to the next paper and bring up other stories this morning. Uh, let's see what uh, News Direct is saying this morning on uh, 
people review segment here on U45. On News Direct, just above the name template, Covenant Best Nigerian Private Institution in 2022 World University Rankings. And that's a positive one. Next to it, we have $4 billion debt proposal. Borrowing for development can pay for itself. Obasanjo, Lado makes Nigeria heavy lift hub of West Africa. The major front burner news direct says uh, east of doing ease of doing business. ETI Access Bank, nine others grant 20.7 trillion naira loans to customers. Another template below that says uh, NID, the NICOM, NICOM presents 600 diaspora icons at 60. Ex-CBN Deputy Governor Melafia dies at 64. Okay, so I was just actually waiting for the story to come up uh, officially. It started trending on Saturday night and uh, Sunday it started making the rounds. Uh, Melafia, we know his story, but I would like to get Ayo's thoughts quickly. Um, when you first of all had the Melafia's uh, uh, incident, what, what came to mind? Because we know he's been on the news and of course uh, his take on what insurgency looks in Nigeria seems to be one that have drawn a lot of attention across several quarters in the country. What's your take on Melafia's demise? I did you get that? All right, Chris. Um, as as regards uh, the late uh, Melafia, I think Nigeria has lost uh, a gem. Mm. We've lost one of our best minds. And um, I said, can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead, please. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Um, I said Nigeria has lost has lost one of its best brain. Um, I he, a lot of, a lot of people who got to know him when he became not as a deputy director in the CBN, but when he became vocal against uh, the units in the north, against the killings and everything. But he he he, he had a very famous interview on Arise TV, on also on channels. Um, it's quite unfortunate we lost the man like that at a, at a critical time like this. Hmm. I I hope the family would. Uh, I pray that God will give the family fortitude to bear the loss. But hmm. um, on on the flip side, there there are a lot of people who are also saying uh, that is questionable because um, the little time he spent with it was actually uh, called in for questioning. Uh, by the DSS, and a lot of people said his health has, his health status changed after that um, uh, time he spent with the DSS. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and we, there's nothing that is impossible in Nigeria. Um, famously, we know how um, Abiola was killed. Um, till today, we still do not get a clear picture of why, when a foreign journalist visited him offered him tea. So why would a foreign journalist offer uh, Chief Abiola tea and all of it? So there's a lot of mystery surrounding, mm. surrounding his death. But I just, I hope, I hope it's, his death is not political and I hope he finds peace for rest. Fantastic. Okay. All right. We'll go over now to the next one. Uh, we're taking a, a fast move on what the papers are saying this morning. Uh, still with us is Ayodi Jadida for a media strategist looking at what the headlines are. Uh, made a show of uh, the CBN uh, former uh, deputy governor. Rest in peace there. Let's go to the next one now and uh, see what we have in store. This day newspaper. How beautiful. Business day. I beg your pardon. And for business day, just uh, three stories and we're off. The first one there says, inside story of electronic bank fraud in Nigeria. Uh, this is a corroborating one with what uh, the CBN is saying, that uh, bank customers are actually scamming banks by getting forex. When you make it difficult for people and you hit them against the wall, they start doing the eaves. Let's leave that. FMDQ Group holds ninth annual general meeting. Interesting fact. It has Nigerian financial market display resilience in 2020. And CBN's OTC FX futures 
product provides soccer to corporate and investors. We'll take the last one. VAT, Nigeria's private sector seek clarification ahead of September 21st deadline. It's really a confused state now. Case rocking the courts. And of course, states saying we want to take it. Some states are saying don't take it. And we have that Masari is being lashed seriously by uh, critics saying his comments on that would not stand, especially as part. Let's say the big story again it says uh, inside story of electronic bank fraud in Nigeria. And the CMEN has been clamoring hard on um, customers scamming the banks with fake visas and tickets and all. Mm. Now, let me ask you, Chris, as an individual, how yeah. do you feel that you have to pay for money you receive? You have to pay for money you send. You, and the dollar <laughs> right now to a Naira is really, really fast. It's high. The Naira mm. is 570 Naira to $1. Let's see. It's very painful, actually. So it's, it's, it's worrisome that uh, businessmen have to make projections and things have to go that way. So for instance, you, we had Peggy Overt on the show. She explained, okay, you've engaged a client for service and you've given uh, a budget of what it will cost to provide that service. And by the time the client is paying you, getting to the market, you're unable to get things done. Those are some of the challenges. And uh, we know how worrisome it is for people to actually have business plan and of course, go ahead and live by the dictates so of it. So who do we hold accountable? So our policy is a major issue. You know, we're going to be looking at the economy in the in the coming days, in deadly here on U45. Uh, we're, we're just trying to balance our take with one of our experts that will be here with us to actually look at where government is missing it and of course how the policy framework has been. Let's go to the nation and see what the nation newspaper have to say this morning on U45. On the nation newspaper, just above the name template, we have vaccination by public servants now mandatory in Oshun. You find out on page 33 of the nation, 400 PhD holders teaching in Oyo secondary schools. In Oyo secondary schools, 550 are non-indigents. Ex-CBN chief Melafia are taken to three hospitals in two days. The major front burner of the nation says uh, private business groups on VAT status. We are confused. It has uh, several riders to it. State laws, court rulings create problems of how and where to pay. States will reject FIRS bid to alter exclusive list. Mbam seeks political solution. And just above the major front burner, we have 11 bandits killed in Kogi. And uh, we have NJC names 27 new judges, 11 heads of court. Population census likely next year. Hmm. And that's the much you can take on the nation newspaper. Go get a copy for yourself. Okay, population is where we're going to pick it up. Population centers like census likely next year presidential proclamation expected soon uh, the, the last time we had a census in this country has been a very long one uh, let's bring you into this conversation of uh, the number of nigerians that we have uh, we saw the money uh, that nigeria have actually lost uh, from twitter on one side looking at what young people are doing and in the course of establishing that particular one you you were able to give some insight uh, Talking about the number of uh, citizens in Nigeria, there is a speculation that census might come up in 2022. Uh, presidential proclamation is what the relevant agencies are waiting for. Uh, what do you make of the fact that data and statistics tend to be in, in shambles here in Nigeria, even when we have the NBS, the National Bureau of Statistics, and we have the National Orientation Agency? All right, um, Chris. Um, in my lifetime, we've had two censors, actually, and unfortunately, we got the wrong figures. The 1992 census thereabouts was... The sad thing is, for everything, we do not have a proper data system in Nigeria. If once, for anything we want to do now, we, we largely depend... You're doing a research, you are looking out for the United Nations 
UNESCO and all of that for data. I think we, we need to start from there. But the sad thing is, population sensor is very political in Nigeria. On the front pages today, we saw the North and Elders Forum talking about the North having uh, more numbers than the Southwest and all of it. So hmm. they're saying if uh, a North and Elders becomes the next president, everyone will not fall. Obviously, everyone will not fall. But the thing is, what is the true number of people in the north. We've had cases, we saw, we've, had, we've seen videos of underage children, even cows being counted. So it's, it's I think the, the, the first stage is we need to be sincere with ourselves. Um, the, the census they are talking about, is it just going to be another jamboree? Is it just going to be another avenue for um, a couple, a group of people to make money are we serious about knowing our exact numbers? Hmm. It's not just our numbers. We need to be serious with everything. We need to be serious with our policies. Look at the CBN policies. CBN is blaming our book effects, which is just a platform. Okay, unfortunately for them, the book effects shut down their sites and sarcastically said they hope the Naira will rise now. So. In, in every sphere, we need to get the right. We need to be sincere. We have leaders that lack integrity, absolutely. And that's the opportunity. So it's not just having a sense of it. It's about being sincere. It's about trying to get the exact figures. Will the next census be mad with regularities? So they remain to be seen. OK. I, I agree. Great, great insights there. Uh, trouble time for us, but uh, I look forward to that particular census. Let's see if uh, uh, this time around technology could actually aid how uh, it could be expedited and get the right figures. When you hear uh, business uh, and economics tell you 220 million, uh, 210 million Nigerians, the numbers, we, we can work on that. Even though a lot of people are still using the inconsistency to make a lot of money. Uh, in their businesses. Okay, many thanks for that. Let's go to the next one now and see what we have next on the paper review. That will be the wrap up part of it uh, before we get into the front burner this morning on U45. Ayo, thank you very much for joining us. Let's take up all the issues um, in a moment. Let's take this break. We'll come back to the show. Do you join us again? <laughs> 